Oh, everybody, welcome to the Legacy Leadership Show. I am so excited to have you here today. I have upgraded my co-host from Tom Chenault, who is currently either on a cruise ship or somewhere in a Mexican coffee shop. And I have Elizabeth Larson, who is our chief of client success at Contact Mapping and is just the most fun person to hang out with ever. And so we are going to have a great show for you today. And Elizabeth, I, this is always fun. I'm glad you're here with me. I love this. I love it when I get to do this with you. So we always have fun together. <laughs> it is. It's a ton of fun. It's always a great conversation. Yeah. And I'm so excited for the guest today. Mm -hmm. And it's it's so neat just the way that things come together because our guest today is somebody who I really met sort of in a contact mapping -y sort of way. We, yeah. I think we originally met on Clubhouse, although I don't know that, remember that part for sure, but we definitely really got to know each other uh, through Clubhouse when that was all the rage, uh, gosh, a, a couple of years ago now. It's crazy. It feels like that was yesterday. And uh, and and we developed this relationship and, and she is an incredible person. She's got an amazing story. And she said, I have this dream to write a book and I'm, I'm making it happen. I'm on it. And so we checked in a couple of times over the last year and I was like, you know, Kate, what's going on with the book? What's going on? What's going on? And I knew it was coming to fruition, but I didn't know when. And just a few days ago, I popped open my Facebook and lo and behold, not only is the book out, but it's already a bestseller. And it's just so cool to see the whole thing coming full circle. So Kate Volman, welcome to Legacy Leadership. How are you? Oh my gosh. Well, thank you so, so much for having me. And uh, I don't know if I should be offended that Tom decided to not show up today, but I'm very happy that Elizabeth is here and we get to hang out. So <laughs> amen to that. Trust me, it's you're 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 gonna know what the heck is going on much better, is <laughs> so, so there's uh <laughs> also you know. Just so everyone knows, it's not, I did not make bestseller, but it was number one in new releases in a certain category. So just so. <laughs> Never let my highlight reel get in the way of the actual facts of the movie. Okay, come on now. <laughs> Number one rule of radio. Listen, How, you, they can't prove that. It is going to be a bestseller. So you put it out into the world and you're, you're going to help make it happen. <laughs> Number one New York Times all-time bestseller. <laughs> I'll take it. I will receive it. We're going to manifest that yeah. starting right now, right Kate. Now. <laughs> That's right. Let's do it. Make it happen. All righty. That is so awesome. Well, congratulations. So uh, Kate is a, a brand new, this is your first book that you have published, right? This is my first book. Yes. So newly minted author. Yes. She's the, the CEO or president or both? The CEO of Floyd Coaching. Floyd yep. Coaching and is just an, an amazing person who has contributed to my life and to the lives of many, many people over the years. And so I've just been really looking forward to this conversation. And so Kate, why don't you start, just tell us a little bit about your background and, and how you got to be uh, into the coaching business that you're in today. Yeah. Yeah. So my background is actually one of my first jobs out of school at college was working at a chamber of commerce. So wow. contact mapping is my jam because yeah. chambers are all about bringing people together. And I was mm -hmm. there for about eight years and I was always in a role where I got to help support entrepreneurs and business owners. I learned about advocacy and mentorship and I mean, really what it takes to grow a business and a community. So it was really such an incredible, uh, incredible opportunity. And I learned so much while I was there. And then I was, uh, I veered off and went to become the marketing director for the city of West Palm Beach Community Redevelopment Agency. Again, working with entrepreneurs, working with community. And honestly, it was, it, it was a lot of coaching, right? Because I coached the the business owners. And we coached the people that we were working with and supporting. Um, and then I was so excited about marketing and all the marketing stuff that was coming because way back then it was Facebook just came out and live video was just coming out and becoming popular. And I got to support the, the community and entrepreneurs in that way. And so I started my own marketing firm um, and I did that for about five years. And, um, and now I get to serve as the CEO of Floyd Coaching and it is incredible. The founder is Matthew Kelly, who has been a mentor of mine for over 15 years. He's written so many books, uh, including The Dream Manager and The Culture Solution. And 
I am just so blessed. My team is incredible. Our mission is to help people and organizations grow. We want to help them become the best version of themselves. And that is what I get to do now every day. And I am just beyond excited to, to be able to do that. And, and everything that you are doing with content contact mapping is, is my jam. I believe in it, supporting people, networking with people. I believe that we are all one idea or connection away from completely changing the trajectory of our lives and networking and communicating and building relationships is the way to do it. Yeah. I love that. And uh, okay, I was going to save this for later in the show because this is just such a cool story. You've got to tell the story because this is, you embody so much of what contact mapping is about. And I think that's why we hit it off right from the get-go. But the story of how you got to be part of Floyd coaching and, and ultimately running that show these days is just incredible. And it's such a cool story of the power of these, of building relationships and of staying with it over a long period of time. So would you tell a little bit of that background, just because I think it's so interesting and something that a lot of us can learn from. Oh yeah. I, I love this story because <laughs> again, it's, you just, one of my favorite quotes is that Steve Jobs quote where you can't connect the dots moving forward. You can only connect them backwards, right? Like, and so about 15 years ago, I read the dream manager and books change our lives, right? So I read the dream manager and I was working at the chamber of commerce at the time. And I reached out to Matthew Kelly and I said, would you speak to our trustees? They would love this content. They would love your book. And he came and spoke and I got to introduce him. It was just the highlight of my whole year. And I, after afterwards, he and I stayed connected because I loved his content. I believed in his mission. I believed in his vision for what he was doing to help people and organizations. And so every year I would just, you know, those people you kind of just sporadically will text or call, hey, how's it going? And and, and that's what I did with him. And then when I started my marketing company, again, I still fully believed in him and his mission and what he was doing. So I would message him just out of the blue and say, hey, why aren't you on YouTube? And you should be doing Facebook. And why aren't you doing more content marketing? And one day he reached out and said, hey, are, uh, let's get together. Let's get together uh, for lunch. And so we got together for lunch. And I was thinking, guys, I was thinking... I'm going to get a new client. He's finally going to hire me to do his marketing. This is incredible. That is not the way the conversation happened. And so <laughs> <laughs> I ended up uh, being, the, he, he ended up saying, no, I, I really, I want you to, to run the company. And, and, uh, and I was like, I don't do that. He's like, yeah, you do. And, uh, you do now. <laughs> and so I guess I do because that is exactly what I do. And I've been there for about five years now and yeah. I've learned so much from him. I am so incredibly grateful for this life-changing opportunity. And to your point, we meet people and you just never know. You never know if your paths are going to cross again, if you're going to work with them, if you're going to fall in love. Like, you know, we hear all of these great stories and yeah. I just am so fortunate that it, it was I mean, had I not continued to reach out to him and, you know, talk to him about what I was doing and share ideas with him and all of that stuff, he might not have thought, he probably wouldn't have thought of me, right? Because it had been such a long time. And so in the background, while I was learning and growing and building my own career, he was doing all of his things. And so at some point it was the right time. And we never know when that right time is. We just have to trust that building relationships and helping people and working with people and just pursuing your visions, your mission, your power, that's what's going to help you attract the right people. Right. And, and the thing I absolutely love about this, it's, I mean, imagine how different her life would have been. I mean, I can't even imagine where she, you would be had you not done those things. But then you said something that, so, and I hope everybody else caught it, because when you said this, it was just like, you were pursuing your mission. You were pursuing the things you were working in your heart. And you talk about that in your book. And that part, I mean, when I read that, it, it just connected with me so much because that joy that you get from going out after those creative things, it just, can you talk a little bit about what that does for people, especially when we're talking about people who are stuck, they're miserable, and yet this creative process and going after these creative things, even as you're waiting for that break, 
Yeah. Talk a little bit about that if you don't mind. Oh, oh my gosh, Elizabeth. Yes, you're the best because it's, I mean, I get goosebumps even when, when people talk about it because so the subtitle of the book is a guide to living your creative life without leaving your job. Oh that God. is the subtitle because we are meant to be create. We are meant to create. Right. Humans are meant to create. We feel alive when we create. And so I talk about in the book, I share the seven myths stopping us from exploring our creative pursuits. Our creative pursuits are those soulful activities that bring joy to our life. And they're different for everyone, right? We've got, you can be, you can dance, sing, photography, pottery, painting, art, poetry, whatever it is. And you pick them. And so often we, we let those things go when we become an adult and we have a job and we have all the responsibilities and the kids and all the things, but we forget how important it is to pursue our passions because our passions, those creative pursuits, they bring so much joy and they spill into other areas of our lives. They help us become a better team member and parent and significant other and all of these things. And so we've when we're not pursuing that, that's when we feel out of alignment. That's when we feel like something's missing in our lives. And so, oh, I talk about in the book how we measure ROI in business, right? It's important you measure ROI. If you're going to spend X amount of dollars on marketing, you need to get X amount of return. Right. Well, what about your rock, your return on creating? Right. Your return on creating is so impactful because it just infuses you with energy. And we need more energy. People need more energy, right? We So often people say we need more time. We need more energy in our lives. If you have more energy, you're going to do all the things you say you want to do. Exactly. Exactly. And I know we're going to end up with a break coming up and I want to talk. Minute. We got one minute. Um, you know, Dr. Carolyn Leaf talks about this concept of when you are not uh, doing as well in other areas, if you pursue something that you're really great at, these other areas will rise. And that's the exact same thing you're talking about. And there's neurological research that even backs this up. I mean, it's just perfect. It's this perfect marriage of science and creativity to help us move forward and find that joy and passion in our lives. Kate, you've got a home run there. It is so cool. It's so cool. I, I love the story. I love the heart behind this. And there's some amazing concepts in Kate's new book. So during the mm -hmm. commercial, make sure you go and check it out. Go look her up on Amazon. It's Kate Volman, V-O-L-M-A-N. And the name of the book is Do What You Love. And she has just done a phenomenal job of helping you to move past the things that may be blocking you, the stories you may be telling yourself, yes. and to move into a more creative life, even if you don't view yourself as being a creative person. So make sure you go check that out. You're listening to the Legacy Leadership Show with Adrian Chenault and his number one hype person, Elizabeth Larson and Kate Bowman. <laughs> we'll be right back. You are like the most, like she's just like, vibing in your it's awesome i just i have such it's good energy i love it i love it so doug steer thank you for being here hi jim's packard we got an awesome live audience hi jane bowman hi christina zaharia j michael smith says he remembers you from the clubhouse days that's awesome we're always so glad you're here and uh derek hartman good to see you buddy so it's awesome make sure you tag the people or share and we're coming right back and we're back. You are listening to Legacy Leadership Show with Adrian Schnall. I'm here with guest host Elizabeth Larson and the amazing Kate Volman, who has a brand new book that just hit Amazon called Do What You Love. So make sure you go check that out. And we're just having a great conversation about defining creativity and finding what makes you go in life. And so Elizabeth, I know you had a burning question before we went to break. I want to throw it over to you. <laughs> so Kate, you, you talked about creativity and the importance of getting into those creative juices and, and moving forward and create. The one thing that some people may think is, and I remember I used to a long time too, what if I'm not creative? What, mm. what if somebody's stuck in that? Let, let, let's chat about that for a minute. Yeah, that's, oh, that's so good because I hear that a lot from people. People right. don't think they're creative, but guess what? You are creative. Mm -hmm. Every single person is creative. Creativity lives in everyone. I have a I have a poem in the book. It's called We Are All Artists. And the reason why I loved it so much is because 
we are, we all create in our own unique way. Creativity is the way that you parent. It's the way you communicate with your team. It's the way you build your business. It doesn't necessarily mean I'm getting out the paintbrushes or I'm writing poetry. That's not what creativity means. It's the way that you you work. It's the way that you live your life. It's the way that you lead. And I, I used to work with a woman who she would get so excited because I would tell her that I would need some, some data. And she would give it to me with like beautiful charts and graphs and Excel spreadsheets. Guys, that is not my jam. I'm not interested in <laughs> spreadsheets. But she got so excited for this project. For her, she used her creativity in that. And it was in the work that she was doing. That's being creative. And she was one of those women that didn't think she was creative. Right. No, she is. It's just in a very different form than my form or your, or your form, right? Right. So everyone is creative and we've got to get out of that. And you don't have to be good at it. You can create mediocre work. You do not have to be, you don't have to be a great stand-up comedian to write jokes. You do not have to be a, like some famous painter to start painting on a blank canvas just for fun. Like we're doing this just for the fun of it. That is what your creative pursuits are. You don't need to monetize them. You don't need to make them a business. Literally, if you have fun playing the piano and you're horrible, play the piano, keep playing. And at some point you'll get better. We have to be okay with being bad. We have to be okay with mediocre work when you're starting. Right. Like and, that's and not the, the goal is not to get to mediocrity, but the goal is to just have fun while you're doing it, while you're getting better mm -hmm. every time. Yeah. And, and just like you talk about in the book, learning about the joy in the journey, learning about that, the, that the journey is the joy of it and to be able to stop and enjoy something now, not when I make this amount of money, I'll go do something. Or when I do this, I'll go do something being able to step back and enjoy and create now that actually puts you in that beautiful place to want to do other things. And I don't know about you, Kate, but I find personally, it makes my work even better. Like my work production is better when I'm doing creative things that are fun out here. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. Elizabeth, we're friends. We, yeah. we, we are new friends. <laughs> we are newfound friends. <laughs> yes. That is a hundred percent. Right. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I, 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 in 2004, I went to this entrepreneur magazine event where they were highlighting entrepreneurs. And there was this gentleman who was the, the CEO of this company, Skull Candy. And I will never forget, this is so many years, this is a long time ago, when I was way younger. And he, I, I've never heard an entrepreneur say this. He, it was mandatory for everyone that worked there to have a hobby. They all had to have some type of, and it was like an active hobby, like skiing, like the, the company is, was very geared towards like sports and things. Yeah. So skiing and for surfing or whatever, you, you had to. And it's because this person knows that when you're exploring that side of you, when you're like doing all these other things, it brings you energy. It brings you joy. Like, and all that stuff, like you just said, Elizabeth, it goes into all the other areas of your life. So when people think, oh, it's not worth it. It's not, I don't have time. Again, this is why we have to change our thinking around creativity. You, it's not a nicety. Creativity is not a nicety. It's important for you to live your best life. It's important for you to, to really become the person that you're meant to be. Mm -hmm. That That's yep. really well said. And, and I think it, you know, it really leads into self-care, right? Like there is, there is this element of that if you're, if you're just in this sort of mode of grinding all the time and that what you do and how you feel about what you do are not always like, that's not always the same thing. Right. So like you talk about that, what, that you know, your work has become a creative outlet for you. So there are times and seasons and things that we do where sometimes our work even feeds us from a creative, a creative perspective. And so there's that sort of virtual cycle that occurs. However, you need to be having those spaces where you're getting refilled and creating from who you are is essential to that. And so super important stuff. We got to take another quick break. So make sure you stick around while we're on the break, go look up Kate's new book, do what you love. You will not regret it. It's a quick and really powerful read. So we'll be back right after this. You're listening to Legacy Leadership on the Genesis Communication Network. All right. This is so much fun. I, I don't have to work like very hard. <laughs> <laughs> 
like popcorn. I have to work much harder when my dad's here. This is awesome. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Doug, you are the MVP as always. Thank you. Oh. Heather, great to see you. Hello, Karen. Oh my goodness. Sean Murphy's here. We love him to death. All right. We're coming back here in just a second. And we're back with Kate Volman on the Legacy Leadership Show. Kate's got an awesome new book called Do What You Love. Hopefully you already bought it on the break and uh, make sure you go check her out on Amazon. We're having a really interesting conversation about what it means, what creativity really means, I think is actually a piece of this, yeah. because I think that that's something that gets often misconstrued into being something that it, that is one example of creativity, but not the whole of it. And I, I really love what you have done in your book, because it really is about, you know, in a way, defining creativity as just doing what you love. That is that is the essence of what creativity is. And uh, I would be very much in the category of somebody that would not label myself as artistic really in any way. And yet I, I, I am highly creative in certain ways. I'm highly creative. You know, I find creativity in the way that I write for business, even though I would feel uncomfortable, for example, writing like fiction, like that wouldn't, I maybe someday, but that's not, that's not something that really intrigues me. And yet I love writing for work and bringing some creativity to that or, you know, all, all, all of these different outlets. And it's so important to create those things because if we don't have them, it become, we we're slowly depleting our battery. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Kate, one of the things that I really appreciated in your book, uh, I, it's well-deserved and also, I, I feel like there are so many amazing coaches and leaders out there that are doing stuff and they're like, I'm pretty much just for women now. And so I'm like, I identify with you, but I'm a guy. Like, I want to be part of this. <laughs> One of the things that you did really well in your book is, is that it's a really beautiful balance of male and female you know, client examples and, and things that you talked about. So I just want to commend you for that because uh, I, I felt included and sometimes I don't anymore. <laughs> you get, like the dudes get to be part of the deal. Um, but I, I, you know, I, I really, I, I want you to come back to this idea that you touched on earlier of someone who, you know, either doesn't see creativity as it stands right now as an important part of how they do their job or how they're going, you know, what they're, they're up to day to day and maybe also doesn't see themselves as being an artistically kind of creative person. What would you say to that person as far as like how, how they might expand what creativity means for them and find more of that in their own life? So what I, what, What's interesting is that this is a this is a challenge for a lot of people, but let's put creativity aside, right? Like let's start with the question of how are you feeling about your life? Yeah. Like how fulfilled do you feel? Do you like if you had to give yourself a rating on a scale of 1 to 10, I mean, where do I where do I feel my life is right now on in like the different areas of of your life and what we're talking about in the book, I share the seven myths that stop people from exploring their creativity, but, but the myths are like, it's not possible. You're not enough. You need permission. Like these things are true for creativity, but they're true for just living life the way that you really want to live them. Right. I mean, think okay. about all of the dreams that people have in their lives that they are just not exploring. They're not allowing themselves to, to do anything that they want to do, not even just their creative pursuits, but they're scared to, apply for the new job. They're scared to lead in a specific way. They're scared to, you know, ask someone out on a date. Like these are all things that, that impact people's lives and, and the energy. So all of this, all of the, the, the things that I write about is specific to creativity, but, but the myths ring true in every other area. Myth number seven is inspiration will strike. And this one was one, my favorite one because so often we think that we're just going to one day wake up and, oh, I'm going to feel like working out. I'm going to feel like finally writing the book that I keep saying I'm going to write. But yeah. that's just not the way that creativity works. And it's not the way life works, right? Like we, we start feeling like we want to work out when we 
put on our sneakers and we go to the gym and we start running or you're doing whatever it is that you want to do. You have to start. And I talk about that in the book. I talk about muses, how muses don't come, they don't come fluttering around and and (sighs) sprinkle fairy dust on you and, and, and inspire you. They meet you while you're working. They meet you when you show up. And so this, the the whole idea of this book is to just encourage people to, hey, explore what interests you. Like, right. what are the things that interest you? You don't think you're creative? What do you find interesting? Do you like music? Do you like poetry? Do you like art? Think about when you were young, when you were young, what did you love to do? Did you love right. to dance? Did you love to sing? Did, like, right. what were those things? And when we can get back to our true selves, like yeah. what that is like, then we just start feeling more. Like, can you imagine? You, he, I love music. I love music. We all love music, right? Music is life. I mean, I just, life would be amazing if we had our own like background music, but it makes <laughs> us feel, it makes right. us feel something. And when we're pursuing our dreams, oh, we feel like we're living on purpose. We feel like we're excited to wake up because we think we believe that we actually can, can have control of our life and there's a lot of things that we that we can't control but there's a lot of things that we can and so often we focus on the things we can't control and the, instead of the things that we can right. and so when we're focused on our on what interests us when we're focused on what do we find fascinating what what can we spend hours talking about i i ask a lot of questions in the book and yeah. i did that very specifically because obviously i run a coaching company i do a lot of coaching it's about asking great questions. Exactly. And so I ask a lot of questions around put, getting people thinking a little bit more about the life that they really want to live. Right. Like, do, are you living a fulfilling life or are you settling for a mediocre life? So many of us settle for mediocrity in our lives because we think that's all that is available to us. Right. We just don't believe. And so that's why myth number one is it's yep. not possible. That's the first myth. We don't believe it's possible. It is completely possible to live a more fulfilling life, to do more of the things that you love, no matter where you are, no matter how much time you have or don't have. These are all things that you can do. And so I would encourage anyone that is listening, what is one creative pursuit? And the people that are listening, they're probably thinking, right? Because so many people have a book inside of them. So many people have, Mm -hmm. I wanted to learn piano or learn a language or dance or whatever it is. What is that thing? And now is the time to pursue it. Exactly. You know, there, there's a saying that we were talking about earlier today during one of our trainings that uh, men live lives of quiet desperation was kind of the, the outline of the quote. And I think it's men and women. And it goes right along with what you're saying. Like we, we with these myths that we can't have these things, we can't have this life for whatever reason, we're stopping ourselves. The question I really want to ask you, there may be people listening to this right now who are feeling stuck who really do have that dream, even know what that dream is, and yet have been stuck for years. What's a step or two that you would recommend for them to start the process of getting unstuck? Action. Okay. A- take action. In the book, I talk about the passion loop. And what you're talking about is the passion loop. We have this brilliant idea. Let's say you know you have this brilliant idea, you want to learn piano. Great. Then you think, yeah, that's that sounds like a good idea. I should do that. But then almost immediately, our mind starts saying, I don't have time. I'm not any good. I'm not going to, why would I do this? I'm not going to become a professional pianist. Like, why is these, why would I spend time doing it? And then we forget about it. But then like a month later, we think, oh, I really want to learn piano. So you're stuck in this loop because now you think about it again and then you make the excuses again and then you don't do it again and then you keep going. So what is the way to get out of the passion loop is, What is the simplest thing that you can do? The simplest thing that you can do is, oh my gosh, you have your keyboard, dust it off and start playing for five minutes. You don't need a half hour. You don't need three hours. You don't need to go find the, you don't need to call and find a piano teacher. You don't need to do anything other than getting out your piano and starting to play. And what happens is you'll see your brain shifts because now all of a sudden you're like, oh, I can do this. And when you do that, it opens up new opportunities. It opens up experiences and joy and fulfillment. And now you're, you're getting into this whole, you remember, remember a time when you, you started, maybe you joined a new club or you met someone new. It opens up your world, right? You start realizing, oh my gosh, there's people in the world that like, that's all they do is talk about piano and music and poetry. So when you explore what you find interesting by simply taking 
the simplest action, the absolute simplest action that you can take. And there's always one thing like for writing this book. And I talked about this with Adrian when he was you know, checking in on me and I'm like, oh, here he is contact mapping, contact <laughs> mapping me. And it was really, I had to create a writing habit. That's right. all it took. I used to, so, so much of the reason why I think I, it took me so long to write this book is because like many people, I think I have to sit down one afternoon, right. write the whole book and it's gotta be a masterpiece. Right. That is not what happens. <laughs> so I created a writing habit. And so my goal all I needed to do is write 250 words a day. They didn't have to be good. They didn't have to be, they didn't have to be anything other than words. And that is my, that was my only job to show up every day and write every day, every day and 250 words. And sometimes it would be 750 and sometimes it'd be a thousand. And over time, oh, now I have 50,000 words and now I have to edit them and make them into 30,000 words. And it becomes this it becomes this magical creative process that I talk about in the book because I love the creative process. Right. We can get frustrated with it or we can have fun with it. And we can have fun with it by knowing that when we start something new, it's okay to be not so great. And you know, one thing that she's talking about right here is literally that concept of priming the pump. You know, mm -hmm. when you first start working with a well, that water's not coming out, but each time you do something, more and more and then it, the water starts flowing that's exactly what she's talking about even on yeah. the days that you don't want to write even on the days you don't want to do something if you do a little something each day that you continue to do that you've primed that pump and that creativity just starts flowing and flowing and flowing it's that exact same thing yeah it's the compound effect and it. it's the comedians are the best best example of the creative process yes. because they show up Every night. And most of them, when you listen, if you want to learn about the creative process, just listen to interviews of, of comedians, because right. most of them will talk about the fact that not only do they go up every night, many of them will hop around and go to multiple clubs yep. night after night. So five, three, three, five, they're, they're all over the place in the city, just like running to different clubs because they know the only way to get better is by going, showing up, right. telling their jokes seeing what lands, what doesn't, how to make the audience laugh. And it's always the smallest thing, like the cadence, like getting rid of one word. It's always something so crazy. To, that's why when you see the greats, the great comedians, they get their Netflix specials, they don't miss a beat. They're right. like, they got it down, but they went to like hundreds, thousands. I don't know. I'm not a comedian. Many clubs to perfect that work. The same right. thing with writers, the same things with musicians. I mean, think about the time and energy it takes to, to write a song. I always wonder like, oh my gosh, in the studio, like how do they choose this word versus that word or this melody or this hype? It's insane. It's crazy, but that's what we do. And so when you think about in your own life, it's the same process. Right. Show up. All you, If all you have to do is show up and you win, like you win just by showing up. There it is. There it is. That's it. We got to take one last break here, and then we're coming back for the final segment with Kate Volman. Go check out her new book, Do What You Love, and we'll be right back. All right. You're doing awesome. What a great conversation. Uh, I've got a good – let me go first on the other okay. side. I got a, I've got a good one. Hello, Tanisha. Thanks for being here. Hey, Tanisha. Hello, Jim. Great as always. Hello, Karen. You're the best. So awesome. And Doug Stare. You my you're my hero, dude. Thank you so much for tagging all these great people on this conversation. This uh -huh. is super, super cool. So, all right, we are coming back for the final segment here in and we're back for the final segment with Kate Volman, the author of Do What You Love and the CEO of Floyd Coaching. And Kate, we were talking about creative process and you know what it takes to move yourself into this space of tapping into these these things that are inside of us that are going to help us to come more alive that you know whether that creative pursuit is actually in on display in some way in the work that we do or whether it's just an enhancement in getting us more into the core of our being that it's going to help us tremendously to live a more fulfilled life in either way and one of the things that you talk about in the book that i i really appreciate it is you know so much of your creative output and your abilities to sustain it has to do with getting intentional about the people that you spend time around yeah. because 
you know, especially in those early days, especially if you don't have a lot of confidence, especially if you are maybe wrestling with your own internal self-talk of whether you are worthy or whether this is a good use of your time or whatever. If you take this kind of delicate thing that hasn't yet taken any root and you show it to somebody who is going to be a naysayer or is going to, you know, to poke holes in it, it's going to knock the wind out of you. And yet you also can find people in your life who are the kind of people who are going to cheer you on and to encourage you and to push you in, you know, going down that pursuit. And so what have you learned over the years, maybe for yourself or maybe in helping other clients to cultivate those kinds of relationships and connections in the stages of developing this internal creativity? So, I talk about creative friends. First of all, thank you so much. I'm so excited that you both read the book. <laughs> that makes me that makes me so happy. And and that the ideas resonated. And creative, so I talk about creative friends and supportive friends. We have supportive friends in our lives that are like, go, go, right? Like you're awesome and do your thing. And we love those people, which is great. We also have creative friends and we need creative friends. We need to find creative friends. Now, creative friends are, they are also supportive friends, but what they're doing in their life is they're creating. They are doing something. They are actively pursuing their creativity, their passions, their creative pursuits. And we need them because of what you just said. Because when we're feeling self-doubt, when we're feeling like we're an imposter, when we're feeling like our work's not good enough, when we're feeling like, oh my gosh, there's no way that I can share this, we need to call our creative friends who understand what we're going through, who understand what's happening in our world. And when we do that, what happens? Those people say, go, do it, get it out, keep going. They don't criticize. People that are pursuing their creativity and their dreams, they do not criticize other people for pursuing their dreams. That's it's true. the people who aren't that criticize. And the reason why is because you're showing them a mirror. When they look at you and they see that you're pursuing your dreams, that you're showing them, oh, I'm not pursuing my own. And so I'm going to tear this person down. Right. No, we don't need those people. Right. If, you, if anyone tears you down and they are not where you want to be, they haven't done anything that you want to do and they're not even creating or pursuing their own dreams and they're just a person that is clearly unhappy, yeah. why would we listen to them? Right. We don't need to. There's way too much positive energy. And so we've got to find those people and they're out there, right? Especially when you start pursuing your creative pursuits. I, I really wanted to explore poetry. I took a poetry workshop and now I'm connected with some really incredible poets. And sometimes, and I love being able to reach out to them and say, hey, I wrote a poem. I don't know, can I send it to you? What do you think? And and it's it's just a really fun creative outlet. And now you start to build those communities. And so whatever creative pursuit is important to you, when you start to do it, you see that like, oh, there's other people in the world. There's so much creativity out there that we don't know about, right? Like we only know what we know. And when you start to explore some of these things, you realize, oh, there's so many resources. There's so many incredible people. There's, right. and even, even the internet, right? I mean, I have, I have mentors that I adore and they don't know who I am. They don't know I exist, but they don't, and they also don't know how much their work has meant to me. Right. I mean, Austin Kleon is one of my favorite authors. He has his book, Steal Like an Artist and Keep Going. And he is encouraging people to explore their creativity. And I love his work. And Julia Cameron, The Artist Way, and Twyla Tharp, The Creative Habit. I mean, these are people that I look at. I'm like, oh, I read their books and I get goosebumps. I'm like, oh, my gosh. It's so fun. And so we get to explore. And so there's somebody that you know in your world and whatever that creative pursuit is for you that you look up to and they may be, maybe you know them on Instagram or maybe you know them on Facebook or whatever it is. And you get to, whether you get to ever meet them in person or not, you get to use them as inspiration yeah. and encouragement to keep going. Yeah, that's so true. I mean, Denise Chenault was that for me for a long time when I first saw her jump off a stool at a, at a training that she was doing right then and there it, 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 she was just like i i admired her for so long now she's an amazing friend and i i'm so blessed for that 
And it's the same thing that we talk about in contact mapping about the community and how important your community is and just those people that are going to be around you supporting you and the who not how. Yeah, you're right on. And having those mentors from a distance Mm -hmm. and cultivating, you know, who are those people that are going to give you that, that are going to be that kind of sparring partner, right? That are going to be that person that, you know, they, they're going to enhance your ideas by like there, you know, there's going to be this sort of like sparks that fly because they're, they want to be in that idea with you and helping you think through it and and they have fun. and, And those are such valuable friends. And so wherever you are in that process of becoming a creative uh, I highly recommend you check out Kate. Go find her on LinkedIn or Facebook and definitely go find her new book, Do What You Love. You'll find it on Amazon. And Kate, we're just so grateful to have you with us today. Thanks for being here and have a great, great day. Uh, well, thank you so much. I'm so grateful that you invited me. And Adrian, honestly, you are someone who has been a supportive friend of mine. And I really appreciated getting all your texts, checking in. How's the book? That's what it's about. So I appreciate you. And when you saw that the book was out, he immediately, you immediately reached out to me, texted me, said, hey, you want to be on the show? So thank you so much for supporting me and the book and and everything that you're doing at content contact mapping is just so wonderful. Keep networking, keep building relationships, everyone. Amen. Amen. We got Bob Bodine for Valentine's Day next week. One of the most amazing and successful and successfully married people. I know you're going to love that conversation. So be back with us next week. Kate, thanks again, and we'll talk to you soon. Have a great one.